We are at Cranfield School of Management in the Management Research Institute with Dr. Richard Wilding, who is Professor of Supply Chain Risk Management. Now, Richard is one of the leading supply chain management specialists in Europe, and today we're talking about building collaborative supply chain environments. Um, collaboration in the supply chain is talked about quite a lot. Uh, why is this? Well, collaborate, if you think about the supply chain concept first, we use a definition which is supply chain management is all about the management of relationships with suppliers, customers, distributors, you know, everybody in the supply chain, in order to sort of enhance value and reduce cost for everybody in the supply chain. So if you think about that definition that supply chain management is all about relationships, then collaboration becomes a, a really important part of effective supply chain management. And what people are finding is, is through collaborating effectively within the supply chain, it really does give them a source of competitive advantage. In other words, they're able to generate more value. But what they're also able to do is to be able to reduce cost at the same time by working with their partners. Well, collaboration is a word not liked by many people. Why, why would you say this is? Well, collaboration is quite an emotive term. Um, if you go and talk um, in Europe, you know, if I'm presenting in Europe about this, you mention the word collaboration and people can get very nervous. If you go and look at the Oxford Dictionary, for example, one definition of collaboration is, is, is like working with the enemy. Now, within supply chain terms, that isn't really, uh, well, that might be the case sometimes, but uh, what we're trying to do is we're really trying to actually sort of work with people have in business-to-business -business relationships, which actually enhance value, right? And so, therefore, it's more the generation of a win-win situation as we're moving forward. So, uh, that's really where this comes from. But if I go and use the word for, so sometimes you could say, well, let's talk about partnerships, right? But if I go and use the word partnerships in the United States, people sometimes get nervous about partnerships because of anti-competitive legislation. So depending on where you are culturally, you can get different interpretations on this word collaboration and also the word partnerships. But really what I'm talking about is the whole issue of business to business relationships which create a win-win environment where people are working very tightly together in order to get a multiplication effect. So in other words, when rather than just one plus one equaling two, what we're hoping is that one plus one equals 11 or 22 or 33. You know, a multiplication occurs by two parties actually coming together. OK, but how do you start collaborating? Right, now, one of the key things about starting collaboration is people often make the big mistake of rushing up to a partner and saying, hey, collaborate with me. Now, the problem with that is it's a bit like me work, walking up to a girl in a bar and saying, hey, marry me. You know, you can imagine the sort of response I get. I can tell you it's negative nearly well, all the time, I have to say that, because my wife might be listening to this. Um, uh, but um, th the issue is, is that it, it, life's not like that. Life doesn't work like that. When I first met my wife, we started off with cooperation. And this was before we were married. So cooperation was, hey, do you fancy going to the cinema on Friday night? And she said, um, well, um, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm going out with my friends on Friday night. How about making it Saturday night? So I said, fine, let's go out on Saturday night. Then we moved into sort of coordination, which was, hey, do you fancy going to the cinema on Friday night? And she said, well, um, I can't go out on Friday night. I've got, I'm going out with my friends, but I will see if I can move them to the Saturday night so I can go out with you on the Friday night. And now we're in collaboration where we sit down with Outlook diaries trying to work out when on earth we're going to go to the cinema again. But in business to business relationships, it's just the same. If you think about it, going to the cinema is a low risk date. It's a low risk project. So when we work with other parties within the supply chain, don't go in there and say, hey, let's map the whole supply chain or let's do some great big thing which is going to take lots and lots of time. What we have to do is start on small, low-risk projects. So, for example, you might say, well, let's have a review of our supply chain or the demand data on our supply chain. Can we have a couple of you know, meetings over the next three weeks? At the end of that period, we'll see if we want to move on. In other words, it's a low-risk date. It's a bit like going to the cinema. After you've been to the cinema, you don't have to go out with the people for the rest of your life, you know, or you can make a choice to actually take things a little bit further. So what we talk about is C3 behaviour. Cooperation, coordination, and then collaboration. 
And by going through that cycle, what you're effectively you're doing is building trust. And when you have high levels of C3 behavior and high levels of trust, that's when you start to get these win-win relationships, which are very, very effective. But should, should all relationships be collaborative? Now, what we have to think is, should all relationships be collaborative? The answer is actually, well, no. Because if you think about it, in our everyday life, we have different types of relationships. I have my relationship with my wife, but I also have a relationship with some chaps I go to the pub with on, on Friday night. I get a lot of value out of going to the pub on Friday night with, the, with, these, with these guys playing some pool and you know, talking about the week at work and so on and so forth. I also get a lot of value from being with my wife. But if I wanted to have the same relationship with them as I do with my wife, I think everybody would be very sort of upset about the whole situation. In other words, you'd be pushing the relationship too far. Now, what we have to think is, is that in business relationships, that can be the same thing. People have to understand the implications of having to work together in a very focused, collaborative way. For example, do you understand the performance measures that need to be applied to both parties? The nature of the information systems that need to be put in place so you can communicate effectively? Are you willing to put in the effort to maintaining the relationship? Right? And if you're not, then you might say to yourself, well, no, we don't want that type of relationship. We want a relationship like going to the pub on Friday night rather than the full marriage relationship. And in fact, there's been quite a lot of research which has sort of defined different levels of relationship. A gentleman called Douglas Lambert, for example, from the US, he actually categorized arm's length relationships, type one um, relationships, then type two, then type three, and then, and then sort of, you know, vertical integration. So, and then what he's been able to do is to say that there's actually different levels which are required within those. And so we're always looking for, well, you know, what is the right thing to do and get the appropriate relationship. And you have to ask that question. What relationship is appropriate in this circumstance within our supply chain? Not always the full collaborative marriage type relationship is appropriate. Richard, thanks very much for your time today. It's been a pleasure. No